Think about the word romantic and what does it bring to mind for you? For most people, it will bring to mind the idea of love, maybe flowers, maybe candy for Valentine's Day. Well, just in time for Valentine's Day, the Santa Rosa Symphony would like to bring you a program of romantic music in its deepest essence. The romantic movement actually began not just about the heart's affections, but as a celebration of the wildness of nature. It was a movement that also explored the depths of drama that had a thread of madness and tragedy running through it. And it extolled the virtues of using story, art, and nature as the source of inspiration for its musical developments. On February 8th, 9th, and 10th, Maestro Francesco Lecci Chong will take the stage to conduct a program that ranges from Beethoven to Brown. Our concert opens with the overture to Beethoven's only opera. This was his third effort at writing an overture and it is the most symphonic. It encapsulates within it the drama of this story of the beloved husband Florestan, a heroic figure who's been unfairly imprisoned, and his devoted, faithful, and courageous wife, who disguises herself as a man in order to liberate her love. This work is filled with symphonic glory, stirring themes, rapturous developments, and the sense that at the end, love triumphs over all. The second piece on our program is the First Symphony by American composer Matt Brown, a collaboration between the Santa Rosa Symphony and the Eugene Symphony. This is part of a four-year project in which we will showcase rising new stars in the field of composition on our stage. Matt Brown's first work is inspired by art, much like Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition was. In this case, the work that he draws on are five pieces created by the American artist Thomas Cole. Entitled Course of Empire, they showcase man's relationship to nature from the 19th century. The first movement will be entitled The Savage State. If you look before you at this painting on the screen, you will see a majestic mountain rising through swirling clouds. Light and shadow dance together in this scene of bucolic wonder. The second movement is inspired by the painting pastoral state. Notice as you look at the image on your screen that the mountain is still visible in the distance. But in front are the beginnings of civilization. We see a temple and further closer to you on the screen are shepherds. There are human figures in the foreground and a balance between dark and light. The third movement is called the consummation of state. In this image, notice how bright, clear colors dominate and how architecture takes its central role. The mountain is almost obscured and what we see instead is this series of vertical columns teeming with a growing population. The fourth movement is titled after the painting Destruction. Here, notice how the dark colors predominate, how there's a sense of violence, how the ocean is teeming with people, and how there's conflict and chaos as fires burn and wars rage. It'll be fascinating to see how our composer, Matt Brown, manages to create a soundscape to match the violence, the dissonance in this picture. The last painting by Thomas Cole 
brings us full circle. Entitled Desolation, notice the sense of renewed tranquility that comes. Civilization may be in ruins, but there's a feeling of calmness as the full moon rises through the mist. There's the shimmering reflection in the water and in the distance again, once more in her full majesty is the mountain with which we started. One of the fascinating things about this concert is to see how composer Matt Brown translates these visual images into aural experiences for us. The fusion of arts is one that is the most exciting of the developments of this year's themes for the Santa Rosa Symphony. After intermission, we are going to have a towering mountain of piano literature, the Piano Concerto No. 3 by Sergei Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff had absolutely enormous hands. In fact, they were so large they could span a thirteenth. One of his hands could reach as much as two of mine. We are going to have the glorious Russian virtuoso Natasha Paremsky take the stage for this work that fuses lush lyricism with intense, fiery passion and drama. One of the paradoxes of this piece is its beginning. It starts with disarming simplicity, a melody that is simple enough to hum. In fact, the opening of Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto No. 3 was deeply inspired by the liturgical chants that he heard in the Russian Orthodox Church growing up. This will evolve into a wild wonderland, extreme development, chaos and confrontation, not unlike Matt Brown's series and progressions of paintings by Thomas Cole. The end of this piece will culminate with ferocious fireworks display on the keyboard. Russian virtuosity in all of its unfettered, liberated glory. We hope that you will join us this weekend before Valentine's Day for a celebration of romanticism in all of its aspects. There will be the drama, there will be the lyricism, there will be the heartfelt passion, but there will also be the grand celebration of nature woven throughout this lush program. One hour before each concert, Maestro Francesco Lecci Chong will take the stage at Weill Hall. Here he will have a conversation with composer Matt Brown about the seeds of inspiration that flourish into works of genius. Join us at the Green Music Center in February for this series of concerts that will evoke the best of the romantic spirit. I'm Dr. Kayleen Asbo. Hope to see you there. <laughs>